When you've got a steak as good as a fillet, do you even need to cook it? Steak tartare doesn't always get the time it deserves, but when done right, even at home, you can have a truly wonderful dish that is actually super easy, but is mightily impressive. Hey there, home chefs. Today I want to go over the special occasion meal in my house, steak tartare. If you've seen Mr. Bean, you may be hesitant to try it. Raw minced meat does not exactly scream appetizing. But I've got a few tips to help avoid the common pitfalls and get you making delicious steak tartare in your own home. To start with, do not use anything other than a fresh cut from a butcher. Supermarket meats, especially pre-minced or diced, are not of the grain needed to serve raw. Not only for the quality, but from a health risk too. Secondly, you need to buy it the day you intend to serve it. If you want this to taste right, you want the meat as fresh as possible. There is no cooking to save any poor quality meats. Right, let's get to making this. Just a small amount of prep is needed. Most importantly, we start with the steak. Always go with fillet for this, and to help with slicing, I'm freezing it for about 30 minutes. It's not frozen, but offers just a touch more resistance when cutting through. Trim off any silver skin and slice thinly. Not paper thin like carpaccio, you want to feel the steak when you eat it but too large and it becomes inedible. Around that thickness should work well. Now, most people will prefer a size closer to a dice, but I actually like small strips. I think the end result looks better and I get a better steak bite as I eat. I leave this up to you, so simply slice up all your meat and transfer into a bowl for seasoning. For marinating the meat, I'll add a good pinch of salt, some black pepper, a few tablespoons of soy sauce. You may prefer Worcestershire sauce for more of a kick, a dash of lemon juice for freshness, and finally the secret ingredient, pickle juice. It's salty, it's tasty, it's great. Mix that all together and you've got perfectly seasoned steak tartare. Before we get onto the accoutrement, if you're finding this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like, and remember to subscribe to be notified of future content. And back to the food. Let's start with a few essentials. Cornichon or pickles is a must. Simply dice them into small chunks and set to the side. Next up is parsley. I've seen some use dill, but parsley works better with meat as it's a bit earthier I find. Give that a good old chop until nice and fine. We don't want big chunks of leaf here. Then my final tip. Shallot is the common other ingredient, but I would use chives instead. It's obviously not as chunky and comes from the onion family but offers a sharper taste and fits in really nicely with the other greens, which I find very pleasing. Give it a go and let me know what you think. That's everything prepped. I've included the shallots as well for authenticity. It's time for plating, which is extra crucial for turning this dish from simple raw meat to a special meal. You'll very often find steak tartare served as a circle, and I'm no different. Find something wide and round and fill with enough steak so it has a nice depth to it. For something more traditional, turn it upside down in the middle of a serving board, lift off the mound and give it a quick tidy. Then we pile our accompaniments separately around it. It's a stylish, almost deconstructed way of serving, which is visually stunning. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> Quick tidy up. And everything's neat again. Normally everything is mixed in first, but I think this really lets all the colors stand out. It actually gives you the chance to taste different combinations of ingredients. Oh, what did I forget? Ah yes, of course, the quintessential egg yolk. It's an easy win adding it on top for flair. But the most important thing is that it's there. Creamy yolk coats the meat beautifully, and you'll notice something is missing without it. Chuck on some bread slices for effect, and you've got a gorgeous looking steak tartare that is going to absolutely wow your dinner guests. You've got yellow on red on green. It's just so vibrant, colorful, and rustic, and you just know it's gonna be delicious too. Let's get everything incorporated and mixed together, and oh wow, let's see that again. If that doesn't get your mouth watering, I don't know what will. You get the fun element of bringing everything together, and then, once you've got a chaotic forkful, I can tell you right now after one bite, I will be cleaning this up before you can say joie de vivre. But, if you're making this more for yourself, I have another option. Skip the fancy deconstruction and mix everything together before centering on a large round plate. Then, although not traditional, fill the outside with french fries. If you want to know how to make them from scratch, I have a video on making fries which I'll link to in the corner. Top that off with a bit of garnish like lamb lettuce, and you have a kind of steak tartare island in a sea of fries, which I defy you not to dig straight into. And there we have steak tartare, just as good at home as at a restaurant. If you're interested in the variation, I tried making steak tartare à la retour into a burger, 
check that out here. But otherwise, now you have a great way to have steak tartare at home. Please remember to give this video a like, drop a comment on any thoughts you have for the dish, and be sure to subscribe and check out more videos like this. Until then, get cooking, or in this case, not cooking, and may the Zen be with you.